Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today, especially under these extraordinary times. This is not how I'd expected Spring Expo to be this year, but I'm so grateful to WCN for putting this on and those of you that have taken the time to join us today, so thank you. My deepest gratitude also goes out to all of those individuals around the world working so tirelessly on the front lines to keep us all healthy and safe. Thank you. While things have changed very quickly in Peru, recent weeks due to COVID-19, everyone here at the Spectacle Bear Conservation Society is doing everything we can under such challenging circumstances to keep pushing ahead and ensuring the protection of such an important species like this, the Spectacle Bear. The Spectacle Bear is the only bear in South America and is the most elusive and poorly known bear in the world. Unfortunately, their populations are rapidly declining. We suspect there are as little as 5,000 left in the world scattered throughout small islands of habitat in South America. Due to extreme human pressure, such as community expansion, like you can see in this photo, brings new roads and large swaths of forests are removed or burned for agriculture, such as the rice plantations in an area that would have once been so important for bears. Consequently, female bears are unable to maintain their body fat, making them more vulnerable to disease and human disturbances. Body fat is also essential for lactation and the subsequent survival of their cubs. Without milk, cubs like this get dehydrated and females will do everything they possibly can to keep them alive, but they eventually succumb to starvation. Large carnivores once roamed across 90% of the terrestrial globe, but today these intact large carnivores cover a mere 36% of the same area. The conservation of large carnivores is one of the greatest and defining challenges of our time, and bears in particular are important because of the roles they play as umbrella species. They require large amounts of habitat, so if we protect them, we also protect so many other endangered species. Spectacle bears are known for the facial markings around their eyes that you can see look like they're wearing eyeglasses, but they're also known as Andean bears. These markings are, are <clears throat> also make them very easily identifiable, unlike all the other bear species. Today, Andean bears occupy a wide range of habitat in the Andean, in the, and <clears throat> in the Andean regions from Venezuela to Bolivia, including dry forests, high altitude cloud forests, and patamos, which are grassy environments with small pockets of forest above the tree line. This species occupies a range that covers only 3% of South America, but it coincides with the habitat of at least 76% of South American species. While Andean bears are known to be adaptable and occupy a variety of habitat and altitudes throughout their range, the historic Andean bear range has de declined dramatically in recent years due to the accelerated pace and expansion of human-dominated landscapes from commercial and substance agriculture, such as this in the photo. You can see in the background, it's basically all uh, agriculture, as well as hunting and illegal bear trade for medicinal purposes. Since the pandemic from COVID-19 began, we have become particularly concerned because the Chinese government has been promoting the use of bear bile as part of a cure to COVID-19. Bear bile is a substance secreted by the liver and stored in a bear's gallbladder. Traditional medicine in Peru is still used by so many people from rural areas, and given the widespread impact of coronavirus in Peru now, and the recommendation by the Chinese government to use bear bile, we fear this may trigger an increase in poaching of an already vulnerable po population, something that's very new to us. We work in a watershed in northern Peru that encompasses three distinct ecosystems, with a large elevation gradient between 800 and 12,000 feet. The equatorial dry forest is close to sea level and goes to approximately 3,000 feet. It is very arid and relatively open, making it much easier to spot bears than in other ecosystems. Precipitation, however, is low and years can go with, we can go years with seeing very little rain, making it very challenging for both people and also for the wildlife in the area. During the winter months, these bears have very little food to feed on, so they spend much of the, the winter feeding on this pisayo tree. And while you can imagine it's not normal for a bear to eat a tree like a beaver, it actually eats the entire tree, the outside and the inside. And it can take up to a couple of weeks actually to finish the entire tree. The cloud forest is as it sounds, cloudy, wet, dense, and the vegetation full of vegetation and often very steep, making it challenging for us to see bears and also to move throughout this area. Could you imagine bushwhacking through this? It's pretty hard. And most of the time we can't even see our feet or each other. 
The high alpine grassland, or Paramo, is at the top of the mountain and watershed and plays an incredibly important role in the protection of water for all the villages and communities below. It's full of lagoons and marshlands that keep the water safe for, for the drought that comes each year. Bears use this habitat seasonally and they share this habitat with the critically endangered mountain tapir, which can be seen here in this photo. There are only a few hundred left in Peru and they play a critical role in seed dispersion. They also have incredibly cute little babies. <laughs> We combined community empowerment, habitat protection, and research together to protect bears across three distinct ecosystems. Our research focuses on locating unknown bear populations and identifying the critical resources they need to survive, such as food and denning locations. We also use uh, GPS collars to check, uh, monitor the bears, check on their health, and ensure that they're doing okay, and also to see the type of habitat they're using. Bears require such large, continuous, and intact habitat to successfully feed, breed, and maintain a healthy population, which is a challenge to find in Peru with such a dense population. We have installed hundreds and hundreds of camera traps over the years to determine where the bears are, but we also use cameras and field observations to monitor known populations and ensure they are healthy, and lastly to determine their major threats so that we can direct our conservation programs to specific populations and local communities. So with Peru on lockdown due to COVID-19, I can only imagine what these bears are doing right now. Enjoying the peace and quiet without people or dogs around, floating in their little water holes. And while our biggest concern with not being able to go into our field site to check the cameras due to the recent restrictions is that I'm afraid this is more likely what is happening with the bears. They're probably enjoying the game of tearing down our cameras and wondering why we have not returned to put them back up again. But this is also a very important conservation tool during this time because of COVID-19 and we are so happy that we can continue to monitor these bears remotely during this lockdown. Wildlife and people must coexist, but sometimes their needs don't align. Given the rapid increase in human use in all bear habitat, conflict between spectacle bears and people is increasing, primarily through the negative impacts of agriculture activity and intentionally set wildfires remaining in remaining bear habitat. Implementing our community programs build trust between communities and SBC, which strengthens conservation work and changes behavior to reduce habitat loss from agriculture, poaching, and out of control wildfires. In the last year, we have reached thousands of school children in the Leche watershed and more than, in more than 10 villages that live adjacent to prime bear habitat. But we found that providing an alternative livelihood is particularly important for the creation of private protected areas. Our most important alternative livelihood program is our felted program, which involves the protection of small, handcrafted woolen animals using a method called dry needle felting. So it's basically an, a needle and some wool. The program is vital component of our work and results in the creation of protected areas as community lands like this, you can see in the background photo, we involve communities in this program who in turn commit their land to private protected areas and work collaboratively with SBC to help keep both bears and people healthy while living, living in harmony together. Felty also provides a direct economic benefit. Our felty artisans are for rural indigenous communities and they become empowered and earn a fair wage. Many participants are earning an income for the first time in their lives. And since beginning this program in 2009, our felty team has grown substantially. And each year we train new women from key villages surrounding prime bear habitat to become part of this program. In 2019, we made over 12,000 felted animals that were sold across North America. There have been very noticeable changes over time. You can see the photo on the left-hand side is one of the original spectacle bears that looks part bear, part something else, maybe raccoon. And on the right side, you can see the new product that's been coming out the last few years, and the quality is just spectacular. Over the Christmas holiday, we increased our sales substantially by over 50%, which increases our need to train and hire more women into the program. And while we don't know now with... Uh, the response to COVID-19, what that will look like for us, we do hope that we will continue to sell and increase the number of products that are purchased each year. 
Our current strategy is to continue to increase the number of products sold so that we can continue to involve more communities, continuing to scale up the program and directly protect more bear habitat. More felties means more bears protected. And while the women are on, on hold for this month due to COVID-19, we continue to provide them with a salary as we are very concerned for the women and the negative effect this pandemic will have on them and their families. Habitat protection is key to the conservation of bears, and we do this by working with locals to create private protected areas, expanding national parks, and also, which is new to us in the last few years, years purchasing key parcels of privately owned land that is critical to the survival of spectacle bear populations. In our strategic plan, we set out to work in the dry forest and montane forest in the Lambayeque region in northern Peru, but our long-term vision is to continue expanding our programs northward to the border of Ecuador. In 2019 and in 2020, we are focusing much of our efforts on the dry forest and specifically on the protection of the sapote fruit, which is located at the valley bottoms. The sapote fruit is an incredible uh, fruit for bears and it provides a high amount of fats and sugars and carbohydrates, like you can see here in this photo. It's very similar to an avocado in texture, obviously not color, but I think it, it also provides them with the, the fat that they need to keep them going for, through the winter months. Unfortunately, very little sapote habitat remains and it is being removed for agriculture or, or cattle ranching. For this local dry forest bear population, this is one of the few remaining sapote groves. You can see the bear habitat in the background and the sapote is burning on fire here. This does not look much like prime bear habitat. There's just miles and miles and miles of burned sapote. You can see here, we're hoping that some of these plants will survive but the fruit for this season were burned and you can see them on the ground there. And while the sapote continues to burn, bears like this are just around the corner waiting to come down and feed on the sapote fruit. This is Marco the bear, he's one of the, the, the dominant males in this po bear population. So this is what many females Bear, female bears look like before uh, while well, they have cubs before the sapote season and then what they look like a few months later. The photo on the right is actually a bear wearing a collar that we placed on her so that we could monitor her and ensure that um, her health and that she continued to, to gain weight. This year we are working to connect bears through protected areas and the purchase of private land. The green is protected through private reserves and national parks and the blue is habitat that is quickly vanishing as humans continue to expand into these areas. Our goal is to protect as much of the blue and to ensure these populations are not small island populations isolated from each other. So while our, our plan is to focus on this blue area in the next year or two, we hope in the next five years we will continue to expand northward, protecting and linking key bear habitats. Unfortunately, this is what the area looks like around key and bear habitat. The square boxes are mining ten years, and the rest is just human uh, human landscape, human impact. So there's very little remaining habitat for bears. In 2020, we are focusing on these two areas seen in this photo, the two circles. And we hope by 2021, these areas will be safe for bears to roam free freely. We are currently working on a land campaign to strategically purchase private land in this area. The green line represents the sapote growth, so all bears living within the red border must come down to feed on sapote in, in order to survive, and only in this small area. Thanks to the support of many caring people, we have begun the process of purchasing parcels of this key sapote habitat this year. This will ensure that female bears like this can become fat enough to reproduce and successfully add new bears into this population, so that cute and adorable bears like this can continue to persist into the future. This cub is probably about four, four months old and not very comfortable around water, especially in this type of dry, arid ecosystem. We believe that by identifying and linking critical habitat and engaging the locals to protect this habitat, we can prevent population decline and ultimately the extinction of wild spectacle bears. 
However, we cannot do this alone, and we need your support so that we can scale up our Artisan Felty program into new rural villages, purchase privately owned habitat, and purchase hundreds of more cameras to locate new bear populations before they are gone. By supporting our project, you will help ensure the survival of the only bear species in South America. So thank you for joining me and please keep yourself, keep yourself safe and healthy. Thanks so much.